Hey YouTube. This is um, basically a little video. I've had some people send me some PMs with some cigar questions. So I was in the mood for a cigar. I thought it'd be a good time to cram everything I know about lighting and smoking a cigar into a five minute video. <laughs> nah, probably may run 10, 15 minutes, I don't know. We'll see how long it takes. But, um, first thing is I store my cigars at uh, for long term storage at about 69% uh, relative humidity. And, you know, there's all kinds of ideas about uh, you know in the winter in the summer relative humidity changes and you have to change your numbers and I've never found that to be true it's 69 percent it's 69 percent in my humidor and uh, you know you and then you got to um, can't rely on your hygrometer you gotta pinch it and make sure that it's a little bit pliable. You don't want it squishy where you could really, you know, put the ends together. But uh, usually I go toward like the, the foot, so and uh, make sure that it's not crunchy, and but also make sure that it's not so loose that you can really squeeze it together. And what I do is about. I keep a, what I call a dry box, which is a small humidor that I have that has a really nice seal. And um, I keep, you know, five to 20 cigars in there. With, it has no humidification. And that one, that one stays around 55 to 60% humidity. And that's just from the cigars that are in there. I take them out of the 70, I put them in the dry box, and that'll get them down, you know, to a little bit dry state where one, they're easier to light, and two, if a cigar's got too much moisture in it, it's going to create steam, which is going to, one, be hot, and two, water, you know, it waters down the flavors, just like your cigar tobacco, uh, your pipe tobacco. You know, too humid, uh, too much humidity in the tobacco. Uh, in my opinion, it interferes with the flavors. But anyway, um, you can cut a cigar before you uh, light, or you can cut the cigar after you've toasted. Uh, I usually cut before I light, but I'm going to try to do this three match method. Well, I leave the uh, the cap on the cigar. And you take a match, and I've got cigar matches here. They're long. These are the uh, famous uh, uh, Swan Vestas. There's a guy locally that sells these. And I'm going to light and toast the foot. And they say that's the three match method. I don't know if it originated in Cuba, but Cuba often gets credit. But, you know. You light, you know, of course, when you're toasting the match, you're going to have to uh, knock some of the uh, spent, the burned wood off to keep that flame. I'll do that off screen a little bit. But you're touching, you know, some people say, oh, don't touch the foot of the cigar with the fire. That's when you got it up to your mouth. When you're um, doing this, you know, as long as you're not really burning the wrapper you're fine and you do this for three matches if you can keep it lit this room uh, I have uh, another air conditioner in this room because uh, I sleep at about 67 degrees so I keep my room really cool so there's a lot of pretty good breeze in here but you know, when you toast the end of a cigar, 
you don't want to do it so much that you ruin the you char it too much with it it really will affect the flavor as far as I'm concerned and uh, the reason I'm leaving that cap on the cigar is some people say that those flavors will you know by convection you know go go through the cigar and uh, put some more flavors in there and yeah I'm gonna say that that's in my experience there's something to that but you know I've been smoking cigars for 30 years 35 years actually and uh, you know people worry too much about stuff oh if you leave it out of the humidor for an hour it's gonna ruin it I read that Marvin Sh somebody some famous uh, cigar magazine you know they they propagate a lot of nonsense it's an organic product it's a lot more resilient than uh, they would have you believe I mean you can't sell accessories and things of that nature if uh, people think it's easy right you have to put some kind of mystery and and gloom and doom to it sell money you know to get money to sell things so we're gonna do this and the truth of the matter is if you do that until the cigar is lit enough to smoke as far as I'm concerned it's not gonna taste as good so right now I got a pretty good ring going on there I'm gonna moisten that tip a little bit and I'm gonna take my cutter get it on there just right now this is a Zycar, um, Zycar and uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, you see how I twisted that? That cuts the wrapper first, and then if you have to continue to snap it, that's fine. But once you get get through that wrapper without trying to squeeze, I rotate it and then you squeeze it. And that's going to keep it from crushing the wrapper into the filler. So now I got it cut and. You can see that that there's a ring, and there's a see that middle part is still uh, not lit, but the outside part's lit all the way around. Now, uh, one thing I've noticed. This, oh, by the way, this is an Alec Bradley uh, Black Market cigar. I smoked a couple of them. J uh, D I G H S X. He's uh, been smoking a lot of these, I believe. Uh, it's a good cigar. This reminds me of cigars back 20, 30 years ago when there was good tobacco, good blenders. And um, the company that makes these cigars is making some really good cigars right now. They've got some of the best tobacco in Nicaragua. Don't know if they have farms in the Honduras. Um, okay, so smoking a cigar. Uh, I think it's just like your pipe. You don't want it to get too hot. If you get it too hot, you're going to get off flavors. Um, it was a cigar devil's weed. It's just a fantastic cigar. And a lot of people that smoked it didn't like it because they'd say it was bitter and acrid and then I'd watch them smoke and they were hotboxing it they were smoking too fast getting the cigar too hot and it, it you know depending on the tobaccos in there whether or not they could take like a Ligero you know you had thicker heavier more oily leaves uh, they may not um, uh, suffer as much as um uh, your Seco or your um, lower level primings from the plant uh, Viso is the other one I had a block there but um, you want to keep it light and if you watch some of the old timers smoke and I guess I'm getting there now but I learned from um, you know I've known some Cubans in my life is a three puff method and the smoke has to spend some time in your mouth, on your palate. And then there's the retrohaling, which 
people love to use that word like they they learned a new word so now they they're going to keep saying retrohale blow the smoke out your nose too give it some time to linger on the palate uh, one person i've seen do that is glenn um i can't think of glenn's uh but the gauntley's uh, manager he knows how to taste tobacco the smoke but what you do is you give a is it the three puff method you take two light little puffs and that's to get a good enough cherry on there to get that last decent puff and there again you're still not huffing on this thing like you're trying to suck start a Harley all right so one two and then uh, slowly out the mouth out the nose some people say how often should I let it out my nose it's up to you I do think that sometimes if you go too much out the nose you can fatigue the your nasal passages and all that and maybe be tough to taste that way but you're not going to get a full flavor of cigar if you do this it's just not going to happen you can't you can't I don't know you know um so anyway about you know they say once a minute yeah you know I'm not gonna I'm trying to relax I'm not gonna sit there with a stopwatch and uh, smoke a cigar like that but you get a much more profound sense of the flavors and um, as far as like flavors, you know, these people talk about seven year age.